Washington trustee, and on behalf of Faith Community Baptist Church, we would like to say welcome to our visitors, both present and viewing from afar. Uh, today's service will go as follows. We'll open up service with a devotion by our devotion team. Uh, following that, we'll be offering by our very own Brother Mike Garvey. Afterwards, we'll have altar prayer by myself, Terrence C. Washington. And following that, we'll be another selection from our very own First Lady, Sister Garvey. Following that, we will have a word from God through our very own Pastor A.D. Garvey. Thank you. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. One more. Lord, you are welcome 
most heavenly Father, we love, we come, Lord, thank you for this opportunity to, to be here this morning, Lord. We ask that you bless the offering that's been to them, Lord. And those that send them, we ask that you bless them around the world, Lord. And Lord, just bless the offering that it be used to your glory, Lord. And just bless us in general, Lord, that we just have a nice day, Lord, and everybody have a beautiful day and come out all right, Lord. We just ask you to be with us today, Lord. In your Son, Jesus Christ's name, we ask you all. Amen and amen. amen. Let us now bow our heads for altar prayer. Most Heavenly Father, we just come to you on this day, Lord. Thank you for waking us up this morning, first of all, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to breathe another day, Lord. Allowing us another day to start fresh another week to start fresh, Father God. We thank you for your protection, Lord, over us. We thank you for safe travels to this building, Lord. And we pray, Lord, for those who are still traveling, God. We ask for safe travels from this building, Lord, but never out of your sight, Father God. We also ask, Lord, that you protect our loved ones, Lord, protect our families, Lord, protect those out in the streets, Lord, who are homeless, Father God. We pray, Father God, for forgiveness, forgiveness for our sins, Lord, as well as those who sin against us, Father God. Heavenly Father, we pray for your mercy, Lord. We pray for your grace on us, Lord. We pray, Father God, you will continue to pour your grace on us, God, despite the sins we commit, Lord. Father God, we ask, Lord, that you will continue to guide us, Lord, with the Holy Spirit, Lord. Guide us in our everyday walks, God. We pray, Father God, for healing on the sick, Lord. We pray for blessings on the less fortunate, Father God. We continue to pray for those over in Israel, Lord, as well as the division that's going on over in our own country, Father God. We just pray for peace, Lord. We pray for healing in all of our hearts, Lord. All of us, Lord, who are going through things, Lord, both individually and collectively, Father God. We just pray for peace and healing, Father God. Heavenly Father, we pray for spiritual healing as well, Lord. Some of us have gone through a lot of trauma, Lord. Some of us are dealing with trauma, Lord. Some of us are going through some hurdles right now, Father God. So we just pray, Lord, for the Holy Spirit to be in us, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you continue to provide peace in our hearts, Lord, despite all the craziness that's going on around us, Father God. And we just ask right now, Heavenly Father, you would keep us focused on you, Lord. Focused on the word, Lord, despite what's going on outside, Lord. And knowing, Lord, through the word, Lord, we have victory already, Father God. And we just pray, Lord, you bless our pastor as he comes with the word, Lord. Yeah. And continue to feed us the word, Lord. Yeah. And give us the word, Lord, that we can meditate on, Lord, when we leave here, God. And feel different, Lord. Feel rejuvenized, Lord. And be ready to take on the world, Lord. Be living examples for you, God. To be examples to others, Lord. To bring them close to you, God. Through our own testimonies, Lord. And how we overcome hurdles in our lives, God. Through the grace of you. And we pray right now, Father God, you just keep us focused, Lord. Focused on the word, Lord. Focused on what the pastor's trying to tell us, Lord. Focused on what he's preaching to us, Lord. And we pray, God, you continue to bless him. Bless our church members, Lord. Pray for our church that we continue to grow, Lord. That we continue to bring people into the house, Lord, to worship you, Father God. And we just ask right now, Lord, for focus, Lord, to not be distracted, God. And we just pray and ask all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I can only imagine what it be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me I can only imagine I can only imagine to be surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel will I Standing in 
done. I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine. I can only to be surrounded by your glory what will my heart sing will I dance for you Jesus or in all will I be still will I sing hallelujah or will my knees will I fall will I be for this morning. This second chapter, the latter half of this second chapter, beginning at verse 11, we heard it read in our hearing uh, early on. And it's from this context and backdrop that we would lean on. As we continue our series of messages for God uh, who blesses Certainly, we have been uh, discovering and looking upon the blessings of God as he would speak well of us, as he would share with us a life worth living. So as we continue down these roads, uh, I want to now today turn our attention uh, to this particular subject in this series of messages the God who blesses uh, the subject for today is extreme makeovers mm -hmm. yeah. we want to look at uh, what God can do in our lives as he would bless us Pulitzer Prize winner, playwright John Gear, in his play Six, Degree, Six Degrees of Separation, says that everyone on the planet can be connected to everyone else on the planet by no more than six steps. Uh, as a result of his uh, theory and idea of six degrees of separation, a leading news magazine over in Germany, Die Zeit, uh, decided that they would test this theory, and as a result, they asked Selah Bengali, an Iraqi immigrant who owns a local philosophical stand, uh, 
to whom he would most likely be linked. Golly chose Marlon Brando. And that would be his test, his experiment of this idea of six degrees of separation. And it would take some months. Uh, but Dysait managed to find the connection between Golly and Marlon Brando. Uh, this is how he would find the connection. A friend of Golly who lives in California works in the same company as Ken Carson, boyfriend of Michelle Bevan, who would be the sorority sister to Christina Kutzer who would be the daughter of Patrick Palmer, producer of Don Juan DeMarco, in which Brando starred. And so he was able to find his six degrees of separation, though it would take a while. My brothers and sisters, um, Max Andrews would share this, that Paul contrasts the condition of Jews and Gentiles to show the Ephesians how significant their salvation is. What we will learn as we look at this uh, passage of scripture, this stretch of scripture, is that God now offers both Jew and Gentile alike an extreme makeover in their lives. Watch this. Because of what God does in our lives, there are no degrees of separation between us and God. We don't have to search through uh, six or so different individuals to find a connection with God if we would but simply accept the blessing that God will speak over our lives. When we are willing to repent and receive his grace, we would remove the degrees of separation that lies between us and God. There's no person on the planet who is beyond the range of the gospel. And so my brothers and sisters, let us take a look today at uh, what God would have us to understand as the church, as a body of believers, uh, in understanding how he blesses. The Ephesians are given a contrast of their past predicament and their current condition. And that's what we want to look at this morning. Uh, there's three things that we want to look at in relationship to their past flight. Their distance, division, and dislocation. And we want to see the countering of these three things that are created, there's a newfound appreciation for their spiritual blessings in heavenly places in contrast to distant, divided, and dislocated. And that is this, renewal, restoration, and relocation. Rather than being distant, they have been renewed. Rather than being divided, they have been restored. Rather than being dislocated, they have been relocated. So let's look at it today. Distant they were. In verse 11, therefore remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh 
who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, made in the flesh by hands. Circumcision is a, uh, is a reality, but it's a term, uh, a phrase that is a source of pride for the Jews. It was a visible sign of their historic relationship with God, God being the one who would initiate and call for uh, the children of Israel that they would be circumcised. They would be separated unto him. Therefore, it was a term of derision, a religious slur, if you will, for the Jews to call the Gentiles uncircumcised. Uh, it would be a mark, an identification that's placed upon them that was signified that they were out of the fold. They were distant to God. Uh, the circumcision, the Jewish nation, uh, they had forfeited their special position with God because while they were physically circumcised, on the other hand, their heart, their attitude, it was not one of submission to God. God is looking for a circumcision of the heart. That which lies beneath the skin is what God is ultimately looking for. Uh, you'll recall when Saul would think that he would outsmart God and disobey him when he was to not take of any of the things, the possessions, the stuff. And then he would come back and there would be the bleeding of sheep in the air. He would suggest that he had brought them back for the purpose of worshiping God. God would tell him, no, obedience is better than sacrifice. God is looking for that which lies underneath the skin, not the external, not the visual, not uh, that which we could portray or even pretend to be. But God wants us underneath the skin to have a relationship with him, a connection to him. That which is quiet, that which is holy. God wants to see redemption reign. And so he would acknowledge that they were the uncircumcised. Um, not only were they uncircumcised, but they were aliens. Right there in the 12th verse. They were aliens, they were strangers, having no hope without God. They were distant. They were distant from God. This is without their relationship with Jesus Christ. The church has a reason to rejoice when we consider our alternative to Jesus Christ. Let me rehearse it in your mind once again. Without Christ. The point is not that these Ephesians were uh, without Christ as Savior at the moment, but as Gentiles, they had no covenant connection with him as the Jews had with him as Messiah. For the Jews, it was a long-awaited arrival of Jesus Christ on the scene. But for them, they had no such relationship. They were distant from Christ. They were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Some expositors would say 
it does not necessarily imply a lapse from a formal condition of attachment or fellowship, but rather expresses generally the idea of being a stranger as contrasted with, a, with one who is at home. My brothers and sisters, they did not feel that sense of being uh, at home. You know how it is when sometimes you would have a guest over. You want them to relax, enjoy themselves, and so forth. And you say, make yourself at home. So if they want to grab a glass and pour themselves a cup of lemonade, they can do that. They want to grab a piece of chicken off the stove, they can do that also. They say, make yourself at home. But that was not this feeling of home, being at home with the Gentiles. Apart from Jesus Christ entering into the world that God would save. These Gentiles were strangers from the co covenant of promise that God had provided. They were foreigners. The Jews had been offered salvation down through the years as God's chosen people through his covenant with Abraham. But the Gentiles, on the other hand, did not have natural access to the message of salvation. They were distant. They were strangers. And being strangers, they lacked the hope that Israel had through Abraham. Under the law, there was no spiritual deliverance awaiting the Gentile nation. There was no uh, rescuing of God from their enemies in time of war that they could look forward to. They would find themselves in a hopeless situation, not having that kind of a relationship with God. They were distant. So much and so, the text would describe it this way, without God in the world. Sure, they had pagans and idols and statutes and things of that nature. But as it refers to Yahweh, the true and living God, they were absent of relationship from him. Though the Gentiles worship many gods, yet they were without the true God. And that all serve as a reminder to us even today. That no matter how many gods we attempt to manufacture, I mean, and there's a lot to choose from. Yeah. Buddha, Allah, Confucius, Brahman, Krishna. And you go on down the line. Until we know the Lord God who created the heavens and the earth. Until we know Jesus Christ who died for our sins, rose again with all power in heaven and earth, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. We are without God in the world. And that may not necessarily be a popular expression in today's society because in a pursuit of trying uh, so hard to be pluralistic in nature, to suggest that somehow or another we can get to God by any means. The fact of the matter is, is that there's only but one way to God and that's through Jesus Christ. 
And I'd rather for you to know the truth than for you to feel uh, dazzled uh, by the idea of feeling as if we, you know, all can just simply worship many different gods and then wind up in the end at the same place. Uh, I'd rather for you to wind up at the right place. I mean, I can tell you uh, that the five freeway will get you to Jackson, Mississippi, but the truth of the matter is it won't. Mm. Unfortunately, there are some who, like some of the Jews, attend church in this country but remain far off. While they make an effort to be spiritual, they neglect so great a salvation which comes through Christ alone. And so, my brothers and sisters, uh, they were distant as Gentiles, but uh, the good news is while the Gentiles began distant, the end of their story is that they were renewed. And my brothers and sisters, that's the good news for even today in our society, in our generation. No matter who you are, where you come from, no matter what walk of life, no matter what crimes you committed, Yes, uh, whether you grew up on the wrong side of the tracks, the right side of the tracks, whatever the difference of the track, you can receive renewal. Renewal is available to all who would believe. And that's the good news of the blessings of God in our lives. The good news is that God has made a way to turn strangers into homeboys. Look what he shares in verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. You may have started out distant, but you don't have to remain distant. Oh, we all thank God for the blood of Christ. Because of the blood, we are no longer distant. We are no longer strangers, no longer foreigners, no longer aliens. We now have hope. We now have God, not an imitation or a knockoff. But the real thing, yes. the Lord Yahweh, Jehovah, Jesus the Christ. Yes, Isaiah would give a prophetic note of this day's arrival. He would share this in chapter 57, verse 19. I create the fruit of the lips. Okay. Peace. Peace to him who is far off and to him who is near, says the Lord and I will heal him. Yes, God can bring that which is distant and renew it to a right relationship with himself. And so while the Gentile nation might at one point have been afar off and distant, yes, today God says you can be up close and in person. And I know the songwriter said it many years ago, it was the blood. Yeah. I know it was the blood for me because one day when I was lost, he died on the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Not only was the Gentile nation distant, but they were divided. Verse 14, for he himself is our peace, mm -hmm. who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. Middle wall of partition, that partition in the temple which separated the courts of the Gentiles from that into which the Jews only 
had liberty to enter. You want to talk about restoration. Restoration has finally come. Because while there was once a middle wall of partition, yes, God has eradicated that wall. Wall that was once used to secure the people of Israel. John Chrysostom. Uh, uh, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, suggests that it became However, a middle wall no longer establishing them in security, but cutting them off from God. Yes, uh, but my brothers and sisters, we thank God that God would come, that God would tear down the wall that would separate and lock out some from receiving the kingdom of God and allow even me to stand here today and rejoice in saying that I am redeemed yes. Yes. born with a price. Yes. Jesus has saved my life. What God would do through Jesus Christ for the Gentiles then and even unto this day every individual no matter what walk of life where you come from God would abolish in his flesh the enmity. And Jesus would die on that cross, shed his blood. It would be his flesh that would abolish the hatred, that deep-seated, deep-rooted hatred that would separate Jew from Gentile. He would abolish in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations uh, that would cause them to be unable to fulfill it, number one. Uh, but to establish relationship, number two. And, and to watch from Genesis 3 and 15 as God would share that I will put enmity between thee and the woman between thy seed and her seed. Speaking of the serpent, speaking of Satan, God would put that separation, that enmity and hatred uh, that would exist between the seed of the woman and the seed of Satan. And as we look at that in Genesis 3.15, you would see uh, that he would speak of that enmity mm -hmm. that existed and that continues to exist from the perspective that there are still individuals who would follow after the seed of Satan. James 4, 4 and 1 John 2 and 15, uh, we would learn that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. And so it still exists even to this day of those who would refuse to receive the blessings of God. We would learn in Romans 8 and 7 that the carnal mind is enmity against God. Fleshly thoughts and ways, yes, are at odds with what God is all about. But yet and still, God would share with us the good news that he can abolish the enmity. He can abolish the hatred if we would but receive the finished work of Christ on Calvary's cross. It's just that easy. Salvation we would often remind one another is that it was free to you and I, but it came at a great cost. Yes, Jesus is the good news yes. because he is the one who bore the cost. Yes, yes. yes, and all we would have to do is simply allow the work that he has done on our behalf to be our representation. 
just as an individual would sit in the courtroom. They would find an expensive mouthpiece, uh, better known as an attorney. Yes, uh, who spent years of practicing law, would know the ins and outs of the courtroom and trial and arguments. Those individuals would be able to put up a defense on their behalf. Don't have to say nothing, just let them do the talking for you. Yes, let their expertise shine in the courtroom. That's all we have to do today, my brothers and sisters, uh, is to simply allow Jesus Christ uh, to be the expert uh, in the courtroom of life uh, and just simply rely on him and just simply allow what he has done at Calvary. Yes. yes, to represent us and to set us free. So while on the one hand we are divided as the middle wall of partition, on the other hand, God has brought reconciliation into the world. Look, look, look at verse 16, be reminded of the text. That he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity, the hatred that would divide Jew and Gentile. God would create from the division one new man. He made both one in himself. Yes, by reconciling these two divisions of men who were uh, desirous of harming, hating, and scolding each other. God would allow them alike to receive the blessings from heaven. God would describe over in Romans uh, the Gentiles are viewed as being grafted into the Jews. But here he would make a varying point uh, to let it be known that he forms one new man from the two. There's neither Jew nor Gentile. That God would receive us both unto himself. That we would all need to come through Christ the Messiah. like an individual who would be down in the basement which had two rooms, two separate rooms. But at the top floor, there was but one room. And those two individuals who would find themselves in those two different rooms in the basement would not be able to see one another or speak to one another, but when they came up to the top floor, when they would come up out of the basement, those two individuals in that same great room would be able to see one another. They would be able to talk to one another. That's what God did for us through Jesus Christ. God would bring us together that we could be able to have a relationship one with another that we could be connected through Jesus Christ. So while we were in fact divided, we're now restored. We're reconciled through Jesus Christ. Let me see if I can cut across the field. Got a lot of text here. A lot that could be seen. 
But Jesus Christ is our peace. Not only did Jesus Christ make peace through his sacrificial death, but he is our peace as well. He came to preach peace. So while we were once afar off, while we were distant, uh, yes, God has come to share the good news, the blessings of us and being restored and reconciled unto himself. We can be at peace with God, which would allow us to be at peace with ourselves. Yes, uh, we, when we would have access through the Spirit to the Father, we have a relationship of peace with God. Yeah. John 14, 27 says it like this. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John 16, says it like this. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now we can sing when peace like a river attended my way. When sorrows like sea billows roll, yes. whenever my life thou hast taught me to say, it is well. It is well with my soul. Yes, God would take that which is distant and make it restore. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Let me leave you with this thought. God can take that which is displaced and relocate it yes. to its rightful position. Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints yes. and members of the household of God. Yes. Not only are they citizens of a heavenly kingdom but they are also members of a spiritual family they're part now of God's household, and you and I share in that same benefit and blessing. Yes, we are able now to stand on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. We're now able to stand, uh, fitted together and joined together by Jesus Christ, who is the chief cornerstone of the building. Yes, we can now stand. Yes, uh, the foundation includes the work of the Old Testament prophets. Yes, uh, it includes the New Testament prophets. It includes the New Testament apostles. Yes, my brothers and sisters, uh, God has brought the two together. God has opened up the door, and that's good news. Yes, it is. Yes. For those who were not a part of the nation of Israel, yes, God has now opened the floodgates. God has now torn down the middle wall of partition. It's good news. God has blessed us with every heavenly blessing in Christ Jesus. Peter would say it like this. He would declare that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Yes, uh, and in response, Jesus would say that upon this rock, I will build my church. And it's that rock that we stand on to this day, the foundation that is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Yes, 1 Corinthians 3, 10 and 11 says this, according to the grace of God, which was given me 
as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it, but let each one take heed how he builds on it. All right. yeah. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Yes, my brothers and sisters, we are resting upon Jesus Christ, on Christ, yes. the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Thank God. Jesus would declare that I am the root and the offspring of David. The bright and morning star. Yes, we're, we've been fitted together. There's no longer a distinction between Jew and Gentile worship. We are fitted together. Yes. John 4, 21 says, Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mount nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But watch this. But the hour is coming. And now is when the true worships, worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship Him. Yes, God is allowing us now to worship Him in spirit and in truth. We can now join in with Father Abraham, uh, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, yes, we can join in, uh, yes, in worshiping God. We now can know whom we worship because God has made it possible. Yes, uh, God has allowed us to have a dwelling place in Him. We were distant. We were divided. We were dislocated. Yes, but God would open the door to bless us with an extreme makeover. We don't look like what we used to look like. Yes, God has blessed us with an extreme makeover. Uh, yes, where we were weary, wounded, and sad, uh, we have found in him a resting place, uh, and he has made us glad. Yes, uh, and so now we're no longer distant, divided, and dislocated. Yes, uh, but we can now walk into our renewal. Yes, we can walk into our restoration. We can walk into our relocation. Yes, we got a new name over in glory. And we can say with assurance that it's mine. Oh, mine. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters. Uh, yes, yeah, since it's uh, yes, Black History Month, uh, yes, our forefathers would say it like this. Uh, when I get to heaven, Gonna put on my shoe. Yes, uh, there was a time, uh, yes, that when Sam uh, did not have the ability to have shoes on their feet, but they knew this. Uh, yes, when I get to heaven, I'll put on my shoes. Oh, God's children got shoes. Yes, uh, God would bring equality, uh, yes, into our lives. God would allow us, uh, yes, to walk around heaven. Oh, somebody knows what I'm talking about. Yes, uh, who we once were is different from uh, who we can be right now. Yes, yes, God has given us a new opportunity. Yes. God has opened the door, yes, uh, from heaven, uh, allowing an overflow of his blessings into our lives. The God who blesses. Now there is hope. Yes, the God who blesses. Uh, yes, now there is healing. Uh, the God who blesses. Uh, now there is possibility. make a way out of no way. Yes, he can. Yes, yes he, can. he is able. Yes, he is. Yes, to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask our thing. Yes, Lord. 
Yes, God can do it for you. God can fix it. Yes, every time. Yes, and so we all come to him just as we are. Trust him. Please, our, our lives on the altar of sacrifice. Just simply say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. You didn't steal. Here I am seeking your divine will. Just come to him right where you are. And receive the blessings that God wants to utter into our lives. God wants to speak truth and benefits and blessings into our lives. God wants to share it with us. Will we receive it from him? Doors of the church open as we stand on our feet. Do you want what God has for you? Everything that there is in terms of salvation, God has already made it available. Yet at the same time, God wants to continue to do a work in your life. God is still preparing us. God is still developing us. God is still maturing us. There is still more that God wants to do. The best is yet to come. Yes, and so I want you to receive what God has in store for you right now. In Jesus' name, Lord, we say thank you for your blessings, Lord, that you bestowed in our lives, Lord, that you would eulogize us, that you would speak well of our lives and our future. Lord, we thank you now in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, that you would touch each and every individual who's making a decision in their lives, for their lives, right now. Lord, that you would allow them to receive what you're offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we thank you today. Now let us pray one for another. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for each and every individual under the sound of my voice. We ask, Lord, that you would bless our going out and our coming in. Lord, that you would continue to bless us, Lord, indeed. Enlarge our territory. Lord, we pray that you would extend our reach. Bless now, Lord, our fellowship. Lord, as we would share and break bread together. Lord, we pray that you would continue to bless, Lord, those in whose company we come. Lord, that we may allow our light and our faith to shine before them, Lord, as we would fellowship with them, Lord, in whatever way we do. Lord, we pray now, Lord, that you will continue to keep us safe. Lord, that you will continue to keep us, Lord, in your arms. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, that you fall before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forth and forevermore. Let us all say, Amen. Amen.